generally I'll look at magazines or the internet for, uh, since I use Pro Tools pretty much exclusively, I'm constantly looking at the different kinds of plugins and processing uh, that they have for the program and different samplers. So those are the main things I'm kind of concerned about. Um, I don't think that the, pl the different platforms, the way you edit changes that much. That's pretty straight ahead. But the tools and the interfaces, um, I try and I just try and play with them. A lot of them are available during with like a 15-day demo off of their websites, and I just um, try and stay abreast of what's been developed or what's new out, and uh, go and play with it for a little while and see if it's something that that's useful. I've worked on. Uh, well, the Young Indiana Jones series. I've worked on Star Wars Episode One, Star Wars Episode Two. I worked on Titanic, Pearl Harbor. Um, I've worked on Peter Pan, uh, Bandits, Hellboy. <laughs> uh, those are some of the some of the main ones I've worked on. Titan A.E. was another picture I worked on. Some of the tools that I use, are mainly it's Pro Tools, and then things, uh, the other big technology is portable recording. Um, so just keeping up with uh, having a good, stable, portable digital recorder that's a high quality um, recorder is a big one as well. A lot of it is is not only processing it, but going out and finding good sounds that, because processing can only take you so far, um, especially given whatever project you're working on. Uh, in, in my opinion, it, it's probably a little easier to process something totally into something that's interesting, but might end up ultimately not sound that organic. So a lot of it is actually going out and trying to find good organic sounds that that are interesting. So um, going out, setting up recordings with people, usually it's pretty specific to the project, but always kind of keeping an ear out for anything interesting and then going out and recording and then editing and then cleaning up the sound of the sounds and taking the bits and pieces that are more that are interesting. Um, ultimately I think the the job of a, of a sound designer is to find interesting sounds and use them in ways that might not have been anticipated. Uh, you, you find an interesting sound that maybe your friend's dog makes and then a squeak that somebody's refrigerator door makes um, and my son's snoring sounds like a comic book that he just sounds completely ridiculous. Um, and you take all these little bits and pieces and you start cobbling them together to make something interesting. And you can, it's amazing once you, with an, when you have a visual image, to, to take some of these things that are completely random. And uh, it, a lot of times they'll work. And that's kind of the, the most fun thing is, is having these kind of unexpected victories um, of found sound and um, maybe even something that's kind of like, you know, my son snoring. Uh, and taking these things and making them work to to the visual that we're working to. So uh, an, another uh, so the the tools are um, it, uh, it's a combination between technology and just using your aesthetic as a person. It's amazing when you go out field recording, then you really then you really start focusing on what you're hearing because ultimately you're trying to get something the one thing that you're trying to get. So if you're out recording cars and you're out on a country road, uh, if it's not a plane, a distant plane by, it's the birds are chirping crazy. They're just, you know, you can't get the birds to shut up. Or, or yeah, you know, a, a air traffic, it's amazing just how much air traffic there is. Uh, you just kind of tune it out after a while as a pedestrian or just living in your house. But when you're actually trying to record something, you, you realize, wow, there's planes going over all the time. Uh, and, and just traffic noise, traffic rumble. Uh, it's hard to get isolated sounds uh, out, out in the world.
If I'm recording a truck, a lot of times I'll, uh, like I did a cement truck for bandits, there's a big breakout scene when this, uh, it's a big Mack truck breaks out of the prison. Uh, they, they steal a truck and they go out. So for something like that, uh, myself and, an, and another person, the person will be on the ground, the street, wherever we're recording it, recorded it out here, um, doing buys and distant turn maneuvers. And then I was actually on board, and then I realized that the best sound that the truck was making was coming out of the pipe. The pipe was kind of high up, and it gets a little dangerous. It's kind of silly sometimes when we're recording that you can kind of put yourself in danger uh, without really realizing it at the time because you're kind of chasing the sound, and then you get the sound, and then you realize you're hanging off of a, a off of a exhaust pipe on a big semi truck. Uh, so, you just, a lot, with, with recording, a lot of it is mic placement, same kind of thing like in, in a studio, except that we're outside oftentimes, and you just try and get the, um, you just have them drive by a couple times, and you, you put your, figure out where the best placement for the mic is, which side of it, and kind of go with it in that angle, and just put your microphone in various places, and find out what you get, and you, you, since they're very, uh, something like a truck is so loud that when you move it around, it, it can create quite a difference. You never know what you're going to get, so just record as much as you can. Which makes, uh, so when you bring it back in, uh, it's fairly time, listening is a real time activity, so you can't really speed through it anyway. Um, that's one, one thing, they, uh, you know, people are always saying you can do things faster, and you can, but some things you can't. Listening is real time, and it all, I think it always will be. Maybe they'll figure out something, I don't know. But uh, yeah, going through, listening to the sound, uh, then finding the bits that are, that are going to be useful. And then, given the application, uh, whatever we're trying to accomplish, uh, start processing it, or just clean it up and then hand it over to the editors, um, who will then take that and edit it to the, the picture. So we'll try and do, if we know, we, usually we, we make a spotting sheet. We know that the truck goes by at 40 miles an hour. Uh, so then we try and get as many 40 mile an hour buys and then make them into files that the editor, editors can then cut. Uh, and then other times, like I worked on a film called Punch Drunk Love. Uh, one of the things the director wanted me to do was to, there was a five note melody that was going to be in the score, that was going to be kind of the signature for the, the character. It was actually going to kind of embody the character. So there was going to be little things throughout the film that would have this little five-note melody. So one of, the th one of the main things he wanted me to do was uh, they're in this restaurant, and they leave the restaurant, and this big semi goes by them slowly, passes by the, the couple. Uh, and this was going to be the point which they realized that their relationship is going to happen. And so the truck needed to make this five note melody. So one of the things I, I had from recording this cement truck was the hydraulic brakes make these kind of interesting squeaks and squawks and they almost have the singing quality to them. So I had all these various um, tonalities of these these truck squeaks that, that the brakes make. So then what I did is I took the score, brought the score into Pro Tools, um, and then one of the tools that Pro Tools has is that um, it, the, it's a pitch shifter that does it in half semitone steps so that I could play, I would find the squawks that were most, most natural for each of the notes of the melody, and then put, I'd take a squawk and put it against the first note in the melody, and then I'd match it, and then I'd just, so I'd make a loop of it playing back and over it, and slowly change the pitch until it was the, the pitch of the first note. And then I'd take another piece from the squawk of the break and match the second note until I'd do all five, five notes of the melody, and uh, so I'd process it that way. It made for an interesting uh, truck buy.